This year is on Likut Asich is Chelek Yud Tes, the second Sicha on Chag Hasukos. When it comes regarding the in the parsha where it speaks about Chag Hasukos, about the holiday of Sukos, so it says two times in the pasuk by Yom Arishan on the first day. Here's how the pasuk go. It says by Yom Arishan Mikra Kodesh on the first day. It's a time for Holiness, no, it's a yom tev, kom leches aved leisaz, you shouldn't do any work. And then the Pasuk furthermore says, and you shall take for yourself on the first day, it speaks about the four species, the little of an esrig and so on. So the Gemara says in Masech Tepsochim, that in the merit of fulfilling the two things about which it says Rishon, what are those? We said, the first day is a day of holiness. So the keeping of the yom tev, and the second thing it says Rishain about, which is the taking of the Lulav. So through doing the th- two things about which it says the word Rishain, so we have the schus of building the base of Mikdash and the name of Mashiach. Namely, the coming of Mashiach. But it calls it the name of Mashiach. Where do we get this from? Because there are two psukim which refer, the base of Mikdash has a reference in the Navi, the word um, Rishain. The actual pasuk is a pasuk in Yirmiya. Which says, "Kise kaved marim meirishin mekayim mikdashenu." To translate that, um, like the throne of glory, primevally exalted is the place of our sanctuary. So we see that the sanctuary is called identified there in the pasuk in Yirmiyahu with the word rishin, and we have a pasuk about Mashiach that uses the word rishin, rishin letzion. Rishon Litzion, Rishon Litzion, Hine Hinam, which means that the first ones coming to Tzion, let me just get the actual Pasuk, Tzishayol Mem Aleph, Tzishayol Mem Aleph Chavzayin, it's right up here. The first ones who come to Tzion will announce, Behold, they are here. Coming to Tzion means coming back with Mashiach, to Yerushalayim. So that's a passage that talks about Mashiach. So both in the passage about the Beis Hamikdash and in the passage about Mashiach it says word Rishon, and we have here two psukim. One says on the first day by Yom Arishin Mikra Kodesh it's Yom Tov. So that's gonna in the merit of keeping that first day of Yom Tov, keeping Yom Tov of Sukkot, we're gonna have the building of the Beis Hamikdash, and in the merit of doing by Yom Arishin, which refers to the Yom Arishin take on the first day, the Lulav Nesu, we're gonna have the Kam the Shmoish Mashiach the name of Mashiach. The Marsha explains it in the Gemara. That the Yom Tov of Sukkah is, why do we sit in the Sukkah? Because Hashem settled us, sat us in Sukkahs, in booths, when He took us out of Egypt. And so, therefore, through sitting in Sukkah, by Sukkahs, we're going to have also a Sukkah. The Beis Amikdash is called a Sukkah. In Tehillim it says, Vayhi Besholim Sukkah, which means that in Yerushalayim there will be His Sukkah, His Beis Amikdash. The Beis Amikdash is referred to a Sukkah. So he says that's why we're keeping the holiday of Sukkot, where we sit in the Sukkot, we're going to get the Beis Hamikdash, which is also called the Sukkah. And by taking the four minim, by taking the four species, it's connected with Simcha. It says, take for yourself on the first day the four species, and then it says that Usmach them, you should rejoice before Hashem. So the four species is particularly related, the word Simcha is used in that context. Huh? So we're going to have the Simcha of Mashiach Kam. Mashiach Kam is going to be a big Simcha. And this is what he says, why it says, we're going to merit the name of Mashiach. Why doesn't just say we merit the coming of Mashiach? Because the name of Mashiach sums up what aspect of Mashiach we're talking about, and that is the joy of the coming of Mashiach. Because the name of Mashiach is Menachem. Why is he called Menachem? As the Gemara says, he's going to comfort us and he's going to make us rejoice. As it says, Samcheinu Kimaisin Isanu Hashem will make us rejoice just like the days that we were afflicted. In other words, as much affliction as we had. So much joy we had. Oh, we had a lot of affliction over the years. It's going to be very joyous. And that's hinted to in the word, Yenachameinu, Menachem, that it'll be comforting when Mashiach comes. Okay, so we have to understand. <laughs> the Chazal was saying that the main emphasis here is the word Rishon. Since, actually, the way the Marashah is teaching us, the connection of Sukkot to the Beis HaMikdash actually has to do with the Pasuk in Tehillim that refers to the Beis HaMikdash as a Sukkah. By Hebe Shalem Sukkah, in Yerushalayim, there will be his Sukkah. So, it really comes out that the reason we're going to have the Beis Amigdash should be related to the Pasuk Basukah's Teshu, sitting in Sukkot. 
and that has to do with all seven days. What's it got to do with the first day particularly? And also, the mitzvah of sitting in the sukkah is not per se the mitzvah of the Yom Tov, of resting on the Yom Tov of Sukkot, which seems to be what the Gemara is alluding to. The Gemara is saying, because of the Yom Harishan, Mikra Kodesh, because of the Yom Tov of Sukkot, we're going to get the building of the base of Mikdash. It seems to be that because of the mitzvah of sitting in the Sukkah, based on the way the Marshal explained it. Also, we need to understand what does it mean about the name of Mashiach? Why is the mitzvah that brings us the, the uh, merit of having the name of Mashiach got to do with joy? Because it says you should take on the first day and then it says about joy. Um, why is it only got to do with the joy related to the four species? What about the actual joy of the Samach the joy of all sukkahs? If 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 the connection is joy, the whole sukkah is joyous. Why are we connecting it with what it says Risha and about take for yourself on the first day the four species? Why is it connected after to the joy of the four species? So to sum it up, what's it connected Dafka to Yom Tov? It seems to be connected, Beis Amikdash should be connected to Sukkot, because Sukkot is called Beis Amikdash. Why is the, the second passage about the joy of the coming of Mashiach, why is it connected Dafka to the joy associated with the four species, about which it says, why not with generally the joyous seven days of Sukkot? The explanation on this. We're now going to go into a, into a stroll to understand very beautiful concepts of sukkahs and lulav, the way they affect the physical world, the way they are spiritual, holy things, and their impact on the world. B. The Rebbe says, based, explanation of this. In the mitzvah of sukkah, we find something new, and we find a an advantage of other mitzvahs in its effect on the physicality in with which we are doing the mitzvah. What is the physical components of the mitzvah of sukkahs? The schach, the branches covering the sukkah and the defones and the walls of the sukkah. So the walls and the schach of the sukkah are connected especially to the mitzvah. In which way? Usually when we do a mitzvah with a physical thing, so the mitzvah affects a refinement in the physical thing. So that even after the mitzvah has been finished, those physical things that you did the mitzvah with, they become called something that were tashmishe mitzvah. They had been used for a mitzvah. And therefore, they can't just be denigrated. For example, somebody made tzitzis. So, the, so long as the tzitzis are attached to the tzitzis being the strings, are attached to the talus, which is the garment, you're not allowed to use those strings for anything of mundane use because that would be denigrating the mitzvah, bizui mitzvah. There are some opinions that even say that after the strings are disattached, you shouldn't denigrate them. You shouldn't just throw them into a dung heap, into a, a dirty place. However, these tzitzas, even when they are attached to the talus, are called tashmishe mitzvah. They are associated, and they're being, uh, there are things that are being used for a mitzvah. They're not called tashmishe gdusha, things that are used for holiness. So for example, tefillin actually become tashmishe kedusha, they become holy objects. The tzitzas, for example, they become called tashmishe mitzvah. They are mitzvah objects. You don't denigrate them, but they don't become holy per se. It doesn't become the higher level, which is called kedusha, holiness. And the reality is with tzitzis, if not for the fact that you're not supposed to denigrate a mitzvah directly, you could even use the, the tzitzis. You would, you would be able to use the tzitzis for even a, a mundane thing. It's not appropriate to denigrate a, something that was used for a mitzvah, so we don't. But they don't have an innate holiness, which if you haven't heard this before, you're about to hear a big piece of news. When it comes to the mitzvah of sitting in the sukkah, the actual... Um, the actual schach get a kedusha during the festival of Sukkot. And rabbin, that's biblically and rabbinically, even the walls, the, the, the material used for the walls. And we learn this in the Gemara. It's learned in the Gemara from a Pasuk that the same way that the name of heaven comes upon things that belong to the Beis HaMikdash, when something is made hektish, when something is uh, designated to be for a sacrifice, it becomes innately Kodesh becomes innately holy and it belongs to the Beis Amikdash. You can't do whatever you want with it. You're not allowed to derive your own benefit from it. Similarly, the name of heaven goes on the Sukkah during the festival of Sukkot. And because of that Kedusha, because of that holiness, you're not allowed to use for the entire duration of the holiday, you're not allowed to use it for anything else. It comes like Muktzah, a certain kind of Muktzah. And square brackets here says that even though that also the Sukkah 
after Sukkot becomes Tashmishe Mitzvah, becomes something that was used for a mitzvah, and it doesn't retain its status of being Tashmishe Kedusha, something that is of use of Kedusha. But that's only after Sukkot passes, when the mitzvah of Sukkot passed away. So it kind of, the it recedes, the Kedusha recedes, and now becomes something Tashmishe Mitzvah, it's been used for a mitzvah, you shouldn't denigrate it openly. <coughs> And that's why you're allowed to use after sukkahs the walls of the the walls and even the schach. You just shouldn't use it for for something of bizarre of this, a, a disgraceful uh, uh, what you call it, uh, use. However, in the seven days of sukkahs itself, they are considered kedusha. So this this added advantage that um, sukkah has that the mitzvah actually makes it something of kedusha, not just a, a an associ- associated with a mitzvah, but actually kedusha holiness. Um, means that it's not just this thing is being used for a mitzvah, for the sake of mitzvah, but actually the kedusha, the holiness of the sukkah, means that the actual sukkah is permeated; it itself becomes something of holiness. That means, so to speak, that Hashem's command to do the mitzvah of sukkah totally encompasses permeates and 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 overpowers the physicality and the materialism of the physical uh, makeup of the sukkah and it all becomes holy gimel similarly so so we see here about the mitzvah of, of sukkah that the holiness pervades it in a in a deeper way than usually mitzvahs for example like tzitzis is just considered a mitzvah object the sukkah during the, the holiday of sukkah is considered a holy object. Gimel. We see the same and interesting similar thing when it comes to the taking of the four species, the Lul of Esek and Hadas and Adova, right? That these four species, physical species, have a connection with the mitzvah that is going to be done with them. And they are more connected intrinsically than other mitzvahs. But first let's preface something, says the Usually the connection of a physical thing to the mitzvah that you're going to be doing with it is, what's the connection? Is that the the material you are going to do the mitzvah with becomes refined in a certain way. But it's not just that after you've set it aside to do the mitzvah it becomes refined. Let's say wool uh, to make tzitzis. It's not just the wool after you chose certain wool to make it tzitzis, it becomes refined. Even before you did the mitzvah, even before you chose that particular piece, ball of wool to make the tzitzis, the fact that wool is something that's appropriate to do a mitzvah for, for example, like wool with tzitzis, shows that wool is something that's more refined by by its definition, by its by its by its uh, by its mere. Uh, is something more defined intrinsically, more refined, sorry, intrinsically, and it's higher than other things. And that's why, even from other permissible things, and that's why that particular material is, so to speak, um, open to having the experience of mitzvah that tzitzis can be made from it. So the whole wool family is therefore comes out, we, we find out when Hashem says, make tzitzis for wool, we find out that the material called wool is of a more refined nature because it's possible to do a mitzvah with it. And here we see when we come to these four species, they're even more selected and appropriate and, and, and waiting to become mitzvah objects. What do we mean? So, Dalit, it's explained in Chassidus, that the reason why the mitzvah of taking the four species, why did Hashem chose these four items, is because they all have an aspect of unity, intrinsically embedded within them. Let's go through all four things. The lulav. What is the lulav? Lulav is a date, is a is coming from a date palm. If you've seen a palm tree, you know that the palm tree, let's say what we use to cover this this the schach, palm, palm, uh, palm branches have leaves coming out very far from each other they spread out they're like you know they're coming out from the middle of the of the palm branch you have leaves coming out that's when they're developed before they're developed the lulav has to be when all those leaves are still totally bound up with the stem with the spine of the palm 
branch. So it's when it's still very young. So a lulav has to be unified at the state of its unification. A myrtle, you will notice that on the myrtles it says, when you buy myrtles, hadasim, for, for sukkahs it says, mishulashim, they are threesomes. So along the stem of the hadas, you have three, so you have leaves going up all along the stem, but each leaf is part of a threesome that's coming out from the same spot. Unity. Willows have a tendency to grow in bunches together with each other near the river. So they have also a tendency to be growing in a unified way. Esrig is even more than that. Esrig has a unique quality that it stays on the tree for an entire year, which means it's incorporating within its growth four seasons. Usually, you know, there's there's a preference. Some fruits have a preference for cold. Some fruits have a preference for hot. So their 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 particular flavor, so to speak, they have their particular nature. The esrik takes all four seasons and grows from them all. That's the unity. It unifies within it all the different factions of the seasons. So we see that all these four items are intrinsically connected to the concept of unity. And since generally, by definition, in the world, the world is a place of disparity, the world is a place of non-unity, so we see that the fact that these four items all um, express unity is because they're higher. We see that their, their connection to the world with all of its disparateness, with all of its uh, uh, fragmentationism, whatever, or being fragmented, these items are less worldly in the sense that they're not so fragmented. They're more, um, they're more unified which is an expression of the fact that they are more self-nullified to godliness. So from this we understand that even though also by other mitzvahs there's a certain refinement that takes place in the mundane items with which you are doing the mitzvah, because by the mere fact that they are appropriate to be used for a mitzvah means that they are something of elevated stature, but it doesn't come to the um, elevation and the specialness of these four items, which so to speak, in their very mundaneness are appropriate for the mitzvah of the four species, which reflects unity. And you see the unity in the actual physicality, physical uh, um, comp- uh, 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 qualities of these four items. Hey, and this is one of the things that's both, there's, so now when we compare sukkah and we compare lulav, we have In one way, they're similar, and in one way, they're different. How are they similar? The similarity between both mitzvahs that we've talked about now, sukkahs and and the four species, is that in both of them, you see the connection of the physical items you're doing the mitzvah. In the case of the sukkah, it's the wall and the schach, the walls and the schach. In the case of the four species, it's the actual botanical items you're using. You see their connection to the mitzvah more with them with other mitzvahs. That's the common denominator between those two mitzvahs. That, the, that you see in the physical, in their physicality, you see more their connection to the mitzvah, to the holiness of the mitzvah. The difference, however, is, in other words, how do you see that? Because by the sukkah, the actual walls and schach become holy. And by the four species, there's actually unity expressed in the actual physical qualities of the botanical items. However, there's also, and that's a, a common denominator between the sukkah and lulavir. However, there's a difference. What's the difference? That the connection of the schach of the sukkah with the mitzvah of sitting in the sukkah is through the fulfillment of the mitzvah. In other words, because you're going to do the mitzvah of sitting in the sukkah, now the sukkah becomes holy. So to speak, the godliness comes down and it becomes holy. The connection of the four species to the mitzvah of taking the four species is before you do the mitzvah. It makes them more appropriately positioned to be used for a mitzvah. So there's a difference here. One is that in, in and of themselves, they, they, so to speak, rise, raise themselves to be worthy of having Kedusha. The, the Sukkah is because you're doing the mitzvah that brings down the holiness and it pervades even into the branches and walls. Okay, file that away. Vav, says another um, common 
denominator between the mitzvahs. And another distinction is as follows. The sukkah is higher than division. Yeah, physically, when you walk into a sukkah, you are surrounded by the sukkah. The entire persona, the entire body of the person, his head and all of his body is, 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 is surrounded by the sukkah uh, unanimously, as one. More than that. Not just is it higher, the sukkah surround the person higher than any division of head, body, and feet by the person himself. It's even higher. It surrounds many people at the same time. It covers. It's higher than the distinction between one Jew and another. It actually says in the Gemara, all the entire Yisrael, the entire Jewish people, could technically sit in one sukkah. We need a big sukkah for that, but the sukkah encompasses many people. The four species also are achdos. They're also unity. The unity which, as we described, each species itself has an aspect of unity to it. And also the fact that you're taking all four species and bringing them together, that's a unity. We become one mitzvah. So in you have a common denominator, the unity of sukkah takes everybody around, and the unity of the four species, bringing all those four things together. However, there's also a difference in the way they unite. What's the difference? By sukkah, there's, there's you don't, the, the unity, the surrounding of all the, the, the various aspects of the person or many people together is that the details are not felt. It's just something that totally surrounds everybody without going into the detail. When we talk about the four species, yes, you need to see that each one is a different, is the species that you need. Right? Um, th- there, the, the differences are critical and are pronounced. And we say that then we take those differences and all, with all the detail and we join them. So yes, they're both unity, but one is unity with, so to speak, which is higher than looking into details. One is no. There's all the details, and we bring all the details together in a unified way. Zion says that we could say that both of these distinctions between sukkah and the four species, in other words, we said there's a difference in the way they react, the connection of the physical to the spiritual, that by sukkah it's only when you're doing the mitzvah. The mitzvah brings the holiness into the walls of the sukkah, when the schach of the sukkah. Whereas by the four species, they, the the, the their specialty, their um, distinguished, their being distinguished and being obviously ready for unity makes them ready for that mitzvah holiness to come into them. That's one thing we spoke about that difference. And we said the other difference is that the, um, the unity, whether it's just surrounding all of them identically, unanimously, or whether there's details, actually those two sets of differences are connected with each other. And here, listen carefully. The Rebbe says like this, that, that when we talk about the world, the world the way it is without being tampered with, without being uh, tempered, is division. Division and uh, fragmentation. I, the fact that in certain things in the world you're able to see the, the concept of unity, that's because... There are certain things where the oneness, the unity of Hashem, shines through them. So this we understand, that the difference between the oneness, the unity of sukkah, which is higher than seeing all the details, and contrasting that to the unity of the four species where the details are very clear and we're joining the details, has to do with the distinction between the level of the kind of shine of Hashem's presence that shines through them. When we're talking about the four species, so that's a unity of details. And even after we say that you're unified, you have all four species together, but they all state different things. That brings out, that expresses how the world, even the way it's a fragmented world, is able to be, is in, a, in, its, in its essence, really self-nullified to God. And there, there's an aspect of unity to it. However, the, the unity, the way it is in the sukkah, where we're saying God's, presence is drawn down into it and that's why it becomes holy so that would express the oneness of Hashem which is higher than the world which wipes away so to speak the differences there's no differences there's God so according to this we can understand how the difference between the sukkah and the four species in their aspect of unity is actually similar is uh, fits parallels 
the distinction between the way the physical thing relates to the mitzvah. Now that Rebbe will explain. The four species, since what they portray, as we say, is how the world, even with its fragmentation, really is self-nullified to godliness. Therefore, where do we see, where is the, um, where is the emphasis about how, the, how these items are portraying oneness is even the way they are in their physical entity. Those physical items, the Lola, the Nazarene thing, they all express unity. Because remember, we're talking about them being a, a mirror for God's unity even in a fragmented world. So that's why even in their state of Gashmias, they express a, a they mirror, they express the, the, the halo or the, the shine of Hashem's oneness. However, with Sukkah, since the concept of Sukkah we said is to bring down the oneness of Hashem, it's, it's supposed to portray the oneness of Hashem that's higher than the world. So that's why the connection, the way it expresses the, uh, the, the godliness in the world is only so, so far as when the mitzvah is performed. Because the drawing down of godliness through the mitzvah of sukkah is higher than the division between holy uh, physicality and spirituality. And that's why, you see, in a certain level, physical and spiritual can't join. They're opposite. But when we're drawing down the oneness of Hashem from a place where physical and spiritual is no different, Hashem is so great that there's no difference before Him between physical and spiritual. So that's why the holiness can be drawn down when you're doing the holy, the mitzvah of the sukkah, it's, the holiness is drawn down and it doesn't stop from, so to speak, infiltrating and taking over the physicality of the walls and the schach. So which one would be higher, it would seem to you? It would seem to you that the much higher one is the, the way that's coming down into the sukkah. It's coming shum, with a whoosh. It's coming down. It's wiping away fragmentation, so to speak. It's affecting the physical. The walls and the schach become holy. The whole, the whole, the whole expression of achdos, of unity through the sukkah, is that we're, it's just taking everything around without paying attention to any fragmentation, any differences. So that would seem to be a higher form of expression of achdos, expression of oneness of Hashem. Comes the Rebbe and the Rebbe says this. Nonetheless, there's an advantage in the oneness, the way we talk about the unity of the details in the form in the four species. Even over the oneness, the way we talk about the oneness, the unity of Hashem, higher than division of Sukkah. Why is that? Because the source of being able to unify details, that even details are unified, this comes from a higher space. It comes from Hashem's true unity. That's higher even than the parameters of unity and division to details. In other words, the achdus of sukkah, when we talk about the unity, the way sukkah expresses unity, that everything is joined together as one, it emanates from a place where to talk about multitudinous, to talk about many, is the opposite of talking about one. Right? And that's why the oneness portrayed by the sukkah is in the way that it negates details. It just takes everything around as one. However, even greater than that is the unity, the way it is from Hashem's essence, which is a simple, simplistic, a pure unity. And in that pure unity, the many is not a a contradiction to the oneness of Hashem. And on the contrary, the many comes from the simplistic unity of Hashem. Now, I don't pretend to understand this, and uh, the Rebbe does say in a footnote, it's explained in Teres Chaim, the Mittler is my modem, and the Rebbe Hashav is my modem. I apologize, I didn't look it up. But generally, what the Rebbe is saying, that to be able to put up with details, and that shouldn't be a contradiction, to oneness comes from an even deeper placer, an even deeper source in Hashem's essence, where oneness actually is the source of the details square brackets similarly also about the connection the unification of the gashmis the physical with the mitzvahs we spoke about the difference the sukkah and the four species the way the 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 godliness 
attaches itself to it. In the four species, we said, so with this four species, there's a mile, there's an advantage even over the, the way that the, the godliness pervades the sukkah. Why? The way that the gashmius connects the oneness of the gashmius with the mitzvah of sukkah, what do we say happens? Through doing the mitzvah, the, 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 the schach and the walls become holy. So it only happens through doing the mitzvah. That's not the actual nature of the physical thing. So it doesn't express Hashem's true achdus, true oneness. However, the four species, where you see that it, even in the actual physical characteristics of the items, they become something suitable for mitzvahs because they themselves express oneness. So through that, there's an expression of the true achdus of Hashem. In other words, it... It, it, it truly pervades and, and infiltrates even the physicality and it expresses the achtos. It's a high level of expressing the oneness. End of square brackets. However, since the way this is working, the way that the details are becoming unified is only in their externality, and really what's happening is they're becoming nullified to the oneness, the details haven't actually... Um, melted into oneness so in a sense that could be high that does feel lower than the oneness that's totally beyond any distinction of division so how do we see that these details that express unity but they still maintain their externality of being different and being detailed how do we see that that's really higher so for that we need to show how the details, okay, that the source of how those those detailed things are becoming unified is really because they emanate from a place of total unity. So we have to show how the details are actually coming from the unity, from the place of unity, and then what we'll understand is that those details are not defying the unity, they're actually a, a, a greater expression of the unity, that the, the unity can even be expressed in details. How do we make that point? By showing, by first, uh, um, by first, uh, um, uh, uh, first proceeding but first um, whatever whatever word I'm looking for but the way we can see it is when we show that the unification of the details unifying details is coming as a result and as a continuum from the unity that's higher than division then what would happen is then it would reveal that the fact that in the unity exist also details so it's not because they haven't yet that the, the, the unity hasn't reached that spot no on the contrary it's because in this these details themselves there's an expression of unity and as we said the true unity of Hashem is so high that it expresses and is the source of the differences and distinctions we could say that that's also why it's the choice mitzvah to take the four species in the sukkah. Because what you're doing then is, you're showing that the four disparate items of the four minim, which express unity, but they express unity, and they still maintain their differences with all their details. If you do it in the sukkah, which expresses unity that's higher than details, so we're showing that the unity within the details is actually emanating from the unity higher than details, and therefore the unity that's being expressed in the details is actually coming from a higher spot at the inner and pnimius, that the inside of the unity that you're doing with the four species, that uh, with, with all their details, is coming from a deeper space of unity, the true achdus within Hashem. <laughs> it's, it's deep stuff. Tess, according to this, what have we said? That the achdus, the unity expressed in Sukkot, is higher than the distinctions between Ruchnis and Gashmias. That that's why when you do the mitzvah of Sukkot, the Ruchnis, the Kedusha, doesn't stop. It doesn't get blocked by the walls. It just conquers the walls, and the walls become holy also. So now we'll understand something about the Kedusha of the holiday of Sukkot. <laughs> Every Yom Tov, what, what makes Yom Tov special? 
why do we have a yomta if we can't work and so on is because there's a higher level of revelation of godliness so we have to understand the level of the revelation of sukkus is the clouds of glory which surrounded the Jews in the desert, that is by definition something called makif. They are surrounding. It doesn't come inside. It's surrounding walls, surrounding clouds of glory. So how does that have a, an internal effect in the day of Sukkot to transform the day of Sukkot to be a day of Yom Tov, day of holiness? I mean, it's just a regular mundane day. How does it transform the day? If you tell me it goes into the day, something that intrinsically changes the day, okay, but the whole concept of Sukkot is... An external thing, it's a surrounding thing. So the explanation is, says the Rebbe, since the revelation of Sukkot are higher than the division between physical and spiritual, as we saw that it had its effect even on the physical walls, that's why the Kedusha can also affect the time of Sukkot. Just like the Kedusha comes into the physical space of the Sukkot, into the physical uh, materials which the Sukkot was made. And since the time of Sukkot is in its external form, just like the time of the rest of the year, it's a mundane day. And it's not like the actual sukkah. The sukkah, you've actually created a mitzvah. And you have to make it for the sake of the mitzvah. Here is just a day, a regular day. How does the time of, how does the the, 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 the surrounding holiness of sukkah affect the day? So it means that in the time of sukkahs, what is really being said, but the fact that the time of sukkahs absorbs that holiness, it's telling us that the revelation of Sukkot, which is not bound by being limited between Ruchnis and Gashmis, that's why even the physical materials of the Sukkot become holy, more than that, even the time becomes holy. That's how unfettered it is. That's how unbounded it is and unlimited it is between distinctions of Gashmis and Ruchnis. And even the time is affected. It goes from a regular mundane time to a holy time. Nonetheless, since this Kedusha, the holiness, which is in the Schach and in the, and in the walls, and even in the time of Sukkot, how does it come? It comes because of the revelation of Sukkot. It's not there intrinsically. So it does tell you that this, the oneness of the Sukkot, the unity of Sukkot, is, is confined and defined by the definition of Achtus, of unity that's higher than division. It's only that this level of drawing down the achtos, the oneness that's higher than the vision, doesn't have any um, boundaries. And it becomes drawn down in every place. Right? So it's the higher form of achtos. Mashenken, which is not the case when we talk about the achtos, the oneness of the four species. Since we said that their oneness is not just as a result of the mitzvah, that intrinsically within them, they express oneness, as we said. That means that the details themselves are in a certain sense of unity. Not because the unity is becoming drawn down into them from outside. They, those details themselves become unified details. So that expresses more the true Achtos of Hashem. So now we're going to go back to the original thing we spoke about. Why is, are we saying that Beis Amikdash is going to come because of the observance of the Yei Marishan, the observance of the holiday of Sukkot? Why not just say that because Sukkah is a Beis Amikdash, Beis Amikdash is called the Sukkah, so because of sitting in the Sukkah, we'll get the Beis Amikdash. So he says like this, in Yud. According to this, we'll understand why the connection between the actual resting on Yom Tov, the actual observance of the Yom Tov is connected to the, to the building of the Beis Amikdash. And that's why the Beis Amikdash, meriting the Beis Amikdash, is connected here particularly to the actual observance of the holiday of Sukkah. And what's the connection of the taking the four species to the name of Mashiach. Why? Let's understand. Now. Let's explain this. Now. The greatness of the building of the Beis Hamikdash is that the revelation and the content of what the Beis Hamikdash means, which means, which he says, Kisei Kavit, it's like the, the chair of Hashem, exalted from the very beginning, that level, that exalted level, gets drawn into the place of the Mikdash. That's the Pasuk says, Kisei Kavid Meirem Yerisha, in the exaltedness of, the original exaltedness of God's, uh, of God's uh, so, celestial throne, is the place of Abbe Samidosh. It goes into the space. In other words, where's the space? It's, it's physical space, Yerushalayim. And on its own, it's a mundane space. But that spiritual level pervades that space like the sukkah 
when we keep Sukkot, what did we say happens? That the, the clouds of glory actually infiltrate the actual time, of the mundane time of Sukkot. Well, we said they, they infiltrate and take over the, the, the actual physical dimensions of the Sukkot. They become Kedusha and also the time. It becomes a regular, it becomes a yomtev. You're not allowed to do. It cancels out the mundaneness, the weekdayness. Not allowed to do any work. Because it becomes a mikra kedish. Mikra kedish can mean to, mikra means to call, to draw in. We draw in the holiness. Nonetheless, that effect on the place of the mikdash, we said just like the sukkah, it's because there's a, a holiness being drawn down from above into that space. The next level that the Gemara talks about is Shmoy Shal Mashiach. Shmoy Shal means the name of Mashiach. What does that mean? We said the name of Mashiach is Menachem because he's going to bring comfort for the redemption. What does it mean to bring comfort? It means it's not just drawing down the revelations from above. It's also going to uncover something of intrinsic about the exile. To bring comfort for the exile, you know what that means? In the prophet Yeshaya, we say there's a passage, we're going to say, thank you Hashem for being angry with me. Thank you, Hashem, for being angry with me. In other words, we're going to take, we're going to look back at the time of the exile, and what's going to be revealed is that this too was from Hashem, not just this too, that, that, that it's something to be thankful about. It was, wow, what was taking place was unbelievable. I mean, the Rebbe has told us, uh, uh, since he was a little kid, he was trying to, since he went to Chede, he was trying to figure out how, how amazing Mashiach is, that it's going to be somehow uh, tell us that all the suffering of 2,000 years of suffering of our people is somehow worth it. It's going to be something out of this world. But what, in other words, we're going to look at the details, and the details are going to be transformed to express the oneness of Hashem, to express the holiness, to express redemption. And that doesn't come just from Simcha. That has to do with the four species, because as we said, the four species is bringing the oneness into the disparateness, into the fragment, into the different details. So this is about bringing the aspect of Geula, bringing Mashiach, transforming all the details of the... It's not like the Golas never happened. It's, it's not like Mashiach comes, the Golas disappears, and it never was. No. It comes and reveals within the Golas the positive that was there. And that comes, not merely through the Simcha of rejoicing on Sukkot, that relates, is, and is, this, is, is an exp, is, that's a similar exercise to what we're doing when we do take the four species. By Yom Arishan, that we express how the very details of this world are, 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 are conduits for showing the oneness of Hashem. Have a very uh, Freilich HaSukas.